Hello, I'm Jeremy Lopez, and thank you for tuning in to our weekly broadcast called Deep Cough Under Deep. I want to take a couple of moments to tell you about the prophetic and what the prophetic is. And I'm taking this from our brand new School of the Prophets course that many of you have begged and pleaded to say, please, Jeremy Lopez, put out a School of the Prophets course so we can learn what the prophetic is, what the prophetic is not. We can figure out our gifts, our callings, and know, you know when and if and where God wants to use us. So I'm going to take a little bit from the School of the Prophets course to tell you about the power of the prophetic. Now, in the prophetic that we know of according to Scripture, there are three different dimensions or realms of the prophetic. The first one is what I like to call the spirit of prophecy, which means the spirit of prophecy is this. Have you ever been like in an atmosphere, maybe a church setting, a conference, a Bible study? You get with a couple of your buddies, you know, who are powerful Christians, and you begin just to praise God, worship God, and all of a sudden the atmosphere begins to fill up with something totally different. It's like you know it's God, but you're going deeper, and in the depths of God you, you start hearing voices, and you, and you start knowing Hey, wait a minute. God is really here. I mean, God's Shekinah glory is really manifesting. Something's happening, and I'm hearing this voice in my mind. Well, that's because where two or more gathered in His name, He's there. Now, that means when God is there, when God is present in our midst, when He shows up as Emmanuel, God with us, He begins to move to a deeper realm and becomes the God in us, which is, you know, the Christ, the hope of glory inside of us. And so He begins to move further and deeper. Well, you know, when Christ moves further and deeper in the atmosphere of worship and praise, you have to move further and deeper as well. Which means when the school, when the spirit of prophecy shows up in the atmosphere, that means God is about to do something. That means God is wanting to speak to you. And when He speaks under the canopy or the umbrella, which I call the spirit of prophecy, that means God saying, I'm speaking to you. And you might say, wait a minute, I'm not a prophet. Wait a minute, I don't have the gift of prophecy. What are you doing here, God? That means God says, when, when, when I show up, when my presence shows up, I'm going to bring this powerful umbrella. The Holy Spirit's going to open this rim up and it's going to be called the spirit of prophecy. That means anybody that's in the room, if they're willing and able and have this, you know, this, uh, this uh, saying like Isaiah said, which was, here am I, Lord, send me, God will begin to move upon you. All God wants is an open heart, an open vessel to say, God, here I am. If you can use me, here I am. I've never spoken for you before, but hey, this is the first time, God. I want to hear your voice. Here I am. Use me. So in the spirit of prophecy, God shows up. God begins to download into your spirit of something He wants to tell you about. Maybe it's for not just you. Maybe it's for the leader or the host or maybe what God is doing in the atmosphere. Maybe it's God saying, hey, I want you to tell you know, Linda on the front row something about her aunt who's been struggling with cancer. Tell him that God, God's going to heal him. So God will begin to speak to you when normally you don't speak for God. You know what I'm saying? And God says, I want to use you because the spirit of prophecy is here. Now that's the first realm. The second realm or dimension is what we call the gift of prophecy. The gift of prophecy is something you're born with. The gift of prophecy is something that you have been gifted by God. Not a talent, it's a gift. So therefore God says, I'm going to grace you with my gifts. So where does the gift of prophecy come from? Well, the Bible says it actually comes from, in 1 Corinthians, it says it comes from the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit comes, and imagine, man, like Jeremiah, you know, before I, before I uh, knew you, before I formed you, excuse me, I knew you. That means the Holy Spirit says, got it. I'm going to move upon this person, give them the gift of prophecy, and all of a sudden they're going to go through their life and they're going to discover who they are and what giftings and talents they have in me. So the gift of the Holy Spirit uh, called the gift of prophecy is something you're born with. It's something that you have. And all of a sudden the Bible says that you don't need the spirit of prophecy to be present. You don't even need somebody around you to help stir you up. All you need to do is say, God, I know I have the gift. And God says, that's right. So you know what? If I'm in the grocery store, maybe in a movie theater, just don't disrupt the movie. Before or after the movie, all of a sudden God says, hey, you know what? You got the gift of prophecy. So I want you to move out and I want you to tell this person something for me. Maybe you're in a grocery store. Maybe you are in a church service. Maybe you're just around your neighbor chatting and the gift of prophecy begins to be activated and be made alive inside of your spirit. And you begin to move out with the gift of prophecy and tell people stuff. 
Now you might say, so is there a border? Is there a boundary? What do I do with the gift of prophecy? Absolutely, there is a border to that gift. That means in the gift of prophecy, which I go more in detail about it in our School of the Prophets course, which I'll tell you a little bit more about in a minute, in that uh, boundary, you're called to edify, exhort, and comfort, which means, you know what? God's not going to use you to instruct. God's not going to use you to rebuke. See, if you're like me as Christians, it's, it's, it's the flesh. It's the human nature that says, yeah, I'm going to prophesy. I'm going to correct. I'm going to straighten up people's lives. I'm going to rebuke them. Nah, wrong answer. You're a New Testament Christian. You're not an Old Testament prophet here, which means you do not need to do that. You are called to go through Jesus, and the avenue of Jesus says the words I speak are spirit and their life. So guess what? You have a boundary there. That is to make people alive. Give them power. Give them hope. Give them love. And how you do it is through the gift of prophecy if you're anointed with that gift. Now, the third one I like to call is what we call the office of the prophet. Does the office of the prophet come from the Holy Spirit like the gifts? Nope. The office of the prophet is like Ephesians chapter 4 says. God says He gives some to be apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers, which means the office of the prophet is from Jesus Christ Himself. Now here's what I like to imagine. Can you imagine Jesus saying, hey, I'm going to tear myself up in five pieces Put them in the church because I want these offices, not gifts, to be a great, uh, powerful representation of who I am. But here's the catch. I want them to walk with integrity. They must walk with excellence because they're representing me. And so therefore, the office of the prophet can move in edification, exhortation, and comfort, but doesn't stop there. In the office of the prophet, you can move in with instruction, direction, uh, rebuke, uh, anything in those areas. Now, let me also tell you this. As I personally am a prophet of God, but I don't like to walk in rebuke. Have I brought instruction to people before and direction? Absolutely. But my favorite thing is this. You have to realize this. Whether you move in the spirit of prophecy, the gift of prophecy, or the prophet, don't focus on the negatives. Don't focus on, I can't wait to get in there and tell people what, you know, to straighten up their act. No, that's the wrong motive and it's the wrong heart. Your heart should be that of Jesus, which is love, joy, peace. Jesus, you know, did you know that Jesus never, ever, ever, even with a woman in adultery, never even rebuked her? She had no repentant heart. He never rebuked her. He said, I'm not your accuser. The woman with the issue of blood, he turns around and says, man, who's touching me? Imagine all the people that were in sin or that needed a touch. He could have said, man, get away from me. Straighten up and fly right. I love the sinner, hate the sin. He didn't use religious phrases like that. He loved people. He wanted to empower people, give them hope and joy and a bright future, the book of Jeremiah even says. So the office of the prophet is something that you were born with. It means that before I was in my mother's womb, God said, I knew you. The word knew in the Hebrew is yada, Y-A-D-A, -A, yada, which means intimacy or literally intercourse. Can you imagine? Which means God was intimate with us before the foundation of the world. And as a prophet, he formulates you, he forms you, and he makes you into that office of the prophet. So when I come out of my mother's womb, guess what? I'm already a prophet. You can't impart anointings of offices. You're born with them. So therefore, as the office of the prophet, I like to move in all the different realms of God. But even in all the different realms, I want to empower people. I want to make them know they're special, they're important. And whatever God prophesies to them, they're going to walk away feeling empowered, even if it's instruction. No matter what it is, they're going to be empowered. So guess what? You might say, man, all that sounds great and wonderful. I could go on and on to tell you about this ministry of the seer. Uh, prophets versus psychics, uh, understanding prophetic dimensions and realms, and I go into detail of how to hear the voice of God for yourself. Now, I know many of you are like, that's what I want to do. I want to hear God for myself. I, I speak on all those subjects and so much more in our School of the Prophets course, which we just released. I want to encourage you, go to identitynetwork.net, look up School of the Prophets course, Trust me, we're getting hundreds that are going to start purchasing this and loving it, telling their schools about it, their churches about it. You get a workbook, a prophetic book on the prophets, a school of the prophets. You get cards about, laminated cards that say how to receive and how to give a prophetic word. 
you get five brand new teaching CDs that are only exclusive to the School of the Prophets course on five different dimensions I'm not even going to tell you about. You have to buy it yourself. You get five additional, check this out, five additional teachings on the School of the Prophets. That is a total of 10 CDs on the School of the Prophets. All of that plus, last but not least, you also get, when you're finished, you send in your questions after every chapter. My staff and I will grade them. Then we will send you a certificate, beautiful certificate, with your name on it saying you have completed the School of the Prophets because we want to empower you on the prophetic to where you can get where you need to be on your calling. So tune in to identitynetwork.net, go to our website, find School of the Prophets course. At the present moment, we're giving you an introductory price. So I want to tell you, you better act now on this thing. You're going to love it. It'll empower you. Hey, God bless you. Have a wonderful day. And I will see you in the internet world next week.